by GCSE Biology 260B. Here we're looking at the action of lymphocytes releasing antibodies specific to the pathogen. The pathogen is the disease causing organism. Here our pathogen is illustrated by a bacteria and here is our lymphocyte. Notice that this time it has a large nucleus. This white blood cell has a large nucleus and this type is called a lymphocyte. This is a white blood cell. Okay, now each type of bacteria has a particular lymphocyte that can detect it. So this is a specific identification by the lymphocyte of the bacteria. If we had a different bacteria, that would require a different lymphocyte. When they come together, the consequence is that this cell divides to form two different clones. One clone like this course with the large nucleus on the inside and these are called memory cells. And the other clone which is produced at the same time, these are the ones which are going to actually produce our antibodies, again with a large nucleus all genetically identical to this one here. There's a this is a clone as well. These are called plasma cells. And what these plasma cells do is they secrete from the cell into the bloodstream protein molecules, which I'll illustrate here like this, which are called antibody. Now the antibodies have a number of effects. One possible action of an antibody is that it will attach to the bacterial cell like this and act as a label that will attract phagocytes. The second mechanism is let's make some more bacterial cells like this so the antibody attaches like this and has a different action and causes bacterial lysis, which means really that the cell bursts. And the third mode of action is that we have many bacterial cells like this, and the role of the antibody is to cause them to stick together. So we'll indicate that like this. So they can cause many of the bacterial cells to stick together. This is called agglutination. Now the consequence of this is that a phagocyte, this knobbly nucleus like this, can then engulf many bacteria at the same time. three possible ways in which antibodies can function. Returning back up here to our memory cells, if after the infection we meet the same bacterial cell, the chances of it meeting one of our memory cells is greater than the chance of it meeting the one original cell. And so the consequence of this is that we react 
faster and with more antibody so fast and with so much antibody we probably don't realize that we've actually got sick this is called the secondary response and of course this means that this pathway is the primary response the immune system